So let me ask you, have you ever dreamed of being a dungeon master for Dungeons and Dragons but wasn't sure what adventure to start with? Or have you been curious about Foundry VTT but worried about the intimidating learning curve? Or maybe you've been loving Baldur's Gate 3 and want to bring more telepathic goblins and tentacle-faced baddies into your tabletop adventures. Well, then do I have the perfect review for you. Today, I'll be reviewing something that fulfills not only all of those dreams, but can also provide a fun experience for even the most experienced dungeon master. Well, hello there, and welcome, fellow adventurers. Please come in and warm yourselves by the fire. While you're here visiting Quills and Quests, I'll try to provide resources that can enhance both your gaming experiences and your everyday lives. But before we get to the review, I want to go over a few important things. First, I want to give a shout out to the Foundry VTT team who provided me with a review copy of this module. Their team is incredible at encouraging fan content and I'm happy to be able to share my thoughts on this module with you. As for the review itself, I do want to give a heads up that I approach reviews differently. Instead of being based on numbers or stars, I focus on the context and purpose of the product itself. I feel it's important to consider the creator's vision and implementation when doing a review as they are essential to appreciate the creation in its entirety. Oftentimes we praise a product and forget the writers and programmers that brought us those experiences. So I'll be telling you how much I recommend this product based off of how well it satisfies the goals of the creators, the needs of the customer, and the evaluation of its price. I'll also separate the review into two parts to discuss the actual Dungeons & Dragons adventure contained within, followed by an overview of the features that the Foundry VTT conversion brings along with it. Finally, keep in mind that this review is primarily geared towards current or aspiring Dungeon Masters, as I'll be showing content and art from the adventure. So, players beware, as there could be some slight spoilers, but I'll keep them to a minimum. Oh, and if you like this type of content, be sure to like and subscribe below. So now, let's take a look at Foundry VTT's version of Fandalver and Below the Shattered Obelisk. Journey to the beloved town of Fandalin, where a malevolent cult threatens to overtake the region. Together with your part, solve mysteries and stamp out growing corruption as you uncover more about the peculiar happenings plaguing the town. Discover what lurks below in this high fantasy adventure that begins with the familiar story of Lost Mine of Fandelver and then delves into the perilous Underdark. This adventure is both a remaster and a sequel to the 2014 adventure packaged with the original Dungeons & Dragons 5e starter set and was called Lost Mine of Fandelver. The story revolved around a quest to find an ancient lost mine that contained a magical forge. Along with dice, a nice fold-out map, and the basic rules of D&D itself, the starter set provided a single product that gave you everything you needed to run this game right out of the box. I myself actually started my very own Dungeon Master journey with this starter set, running the full story as my first campaign. It was a great way to slowly introduce me as a brand new DM, as well as my party of mostly new players, to the rules through quests that really ease into the world of D&D. We all had such a good time with it that I'm still running the same campaign with the same party years later, though we've moved on to other stories after we finished the starter story. And now we have Fandelver and Below the Shattered Obelisk. In this virtual tabletop format, I believe it acts as a brand new digital starter kit for those new to both Dungeons & Dragons and Foundry VTT itself. 
Of course, that doesn't mean experienced DMs can't get some fun out of it too, especially if you've already ran the original Lost Mind story and want to continue it with your players. As for the story, it's broken down into a remastered section called A Lost Mine that takes players from 1st to 5th level, while the sequel section is called The Obelisk, continuing the story by taking characters from 5th all the way to 12th level. A Lost Mine is a fairly simple adventure with a big bad trying to find this ancient mine before you do despite the fact that the story never truly feels like a race against the enemy. The Obelisk really cranks up the weird by adding a bit of eldritch horror with a dash of mystery to the mix for a truly otherworldly adventure. The updates to A Lost Mine are fairly minimal, being mostly cosmetic, but there are some nice additions as well. The biggest change is the amount of diversity they try to bring to the characters and monsters of the story. They change up the variety and difficulty of monster encounters to provide a slightly more challenging experience while also increasing the feeling of being in a magical fantasy world. The chief example of this is an evil wizard's rat familiar gets replaced with a more exotic quasit creature. There are even a few gender swaps and better inclusion of racial diversity which is appreciated because I do believe representation does matter, as it brings safety and inclusion to the table for more players. The anchor of this adventure is the town of Phandalin, where players have most of their social interactions and get most of their quests. While they slightly improved NPC interactions here, the only thing keeping the players in this town is the fact that it's where most of their quests are based. I can appreciate that the design of the town is to provide a safe place for the adventurers to slowly open up the world around them piece by piece, but after a while the town can feel a little too familiar. I've seen some suggestions of giving players a reason to be invested by making the NPCs more interesting or more involved in the story. And while roleplay is a very important part of D&D, even being one of its key pillars of play, I find it's not always the way to the player's heart. A lot of players come to D&D to bash skulls and loot treasure, not learn how to make friends and influence villagers. In order to help the players feel more invested in the town, I've found it's better to let them actually lay down roots in a more tangible way. During my run through of the original adventure, I allowed my players to take over the Red Brand hideout, an early dungeon found in the basement of the dilapidated manor in town, after they cleared out the ruffians. It seemed a shame to have such a prime piece of real estate sitting around, freshly vacant, while the players pay for rooms or sleep in barns. They used this hideout as a sort of headquarters for their adventure, and combined with some unique downtime homebrew, they really became more invested in their new hometown. The biggest addition by far is the amount of new art, and honestly it just looks gorgeous, with even newly created maps for some of the side quests. With this part of the story mostly unchanged, it's a fun story that has enough side quest opportunities to provide a sort of sandbox experience. The story's goal and the big bad at the end, in my opinion, end a little anticlimactically. The big bad is hinted at all throughout the adventure, and by the time you have a party of 5th level adventurers, they can easily defeat him with little fanfare. I changed this scene of the final showdown to allow some return cameos of evildoers that got away earlier in the adventure so that the battle can feel more exciting as the completion of the party's first real campaign. After returning to Phandalin from the final dungeon in A Lost Mine, the story immediately shifts into the new content of the obelisk. Now, while I have read through the adventure, I have yet to actually run it for my players. I do plan to run it for them, so guys, if you're watching, maybe skip to the next part so you don't get the story spoilers. Once the party is back in town, they're told of mysterious happenings that have begun to plague the village. This kicks off a series of mysteries the party needs to solve but instead of feeling like a family-friendly Scooby-Doo mystery, 
this kicks into high gear with body horror and potentially deadly consequences. I think now is an important time to take a step back and mention how important I think it is to start this adventure with safety tools at your table. You never know what someone's personal tolerance level is for depictions of things like body horror or visually gross artwork of mutated villagers or horrific monsters. Not to mention how easily a dungeon master or other players can get into graphic descriptions of interacting with these atrocities in combat. That's why I highly recommend using something like Monty Cook's Consent in Gaming at the beginning of the campaign or at least at the beginning of this section. Essentially, it makes sure that you as the dungeon master knows what types of content could possibly be triggering for your players so that you know what type of content to be careful with or avoid entirely. I'll put a link to the online form version that I created for the use in my games. While there's not much new content in The Lost Mine, the amount of content, maps, story, and eldritch insanity that happened in the obelisk turn the shenanigans up to 11. It takes a lot of content to take a party from 5th level all the way up to 12th, and the power of the party by that time is nothing to sneeze at. Thankfully, the big bad of this section is far more intimidating and satisfying to take down than in the Lost Mine section. Now that we've covered what's actually in the adventure, let's talk about the Foundry VTT model itself and the specific features and additions it brings to the adventure. Alongside the release of this adventure, Foundry VTT also released version 3 of their D&D 5e system. As with all Foundry VTT updates, be careful when updating, as developer modules take time to be fully compatible. If you want to see the basic features that were introduced in version 3 of their system, check out my Top 50 Features video. For this review, I'll just be going over the specific features exclusive to this adventure module. When we open up the adventure module, we get a great overview of what's contained within. As you can see, there are 163 actors, 252 items, 59 journal entries, 35 scenes, 12 rollable tables, 9 macros, and 70 folders to organize everything in. I won't go over everything, but let's go over the important highlights. First, let's skip ahead and talk about the journal entries. Not only are these one of my personal favorite features of the VTT version, but it's also how you as a dungeon master will primarily be learning about and interacting with all of the other entities. Not only do all of the folders have this eerie green color applied, but the entire journal has a nice splash of foreboding green colors on all of the buttons and scroll bars, as well as a nice ichor-like staining across the top, bottom, and corners of every journal entry. This helps it feel like these pages are straight out of a physical D&D adventure book. Having created a lot of journals myself, I can't imagine the painstaking amount of time that went into carefully crafting and organizing all of these journals. Not only is the organization easy to navigate, but anytime a journal entry mentions any other entity at all, it will always be linked so that you can click and access it right away. There are helpful callouts to highlight different important items, and all of the wonderful art has been embedded in the journals so you can easily show them off to the players. Since this is the feature that any dungeon master is going to be interacting with the most, the developers really knocked it out of the park to make these experiences as easy to use and helpful as possible. Next, we can talk about the incredibly whopping number of 163 actors, mostly in the form of monsters with a handful of NPCs. All of these actors have beautiful art ripped directly out of the book, which make for a very satisfying and cohesive experience. The actors are organized into folders by the chapters in the adventure for quick reference. Thankfully, most of the monsters and NPCs have already been placed onto the map for you. With the few times that this is not the case, the journal links directly to that actor so you can quickly drag them out of the journal and onto the map right away without needing to navigate to the folders. 
It's worth noting that at the time of this recording, monster and NPC sheets have not gotten the beautiful visual refresh that character sheets did during the 3.0 upgrade to the 5e system. This isn't necessarily a complaint, but more of a mention, as players won't be seeing these sheets, so I recognize that it would be a lot of work for the developers just for the dungeon master to see. However, it's when these actors are on the maps that these new features really start to shine. For starters, you may notice that the art has this nice frame-breaking effect where parts of the actors overflow across the borders of the frame. It's just a nice touch to make them pop a little more. But these actors don't just look pretty. They have some fun new functionality as well. Each token is surrounded by what the developers are calling a dynamic ring that flashes with different colors to give visual feedback to indicate certain actions. It double flashes green when the, you target the token. It gives a rapid flash of red when the token takes damage or a nice pulse of healing green when the token receives healing. The developers stated they have more planned features to come to these dynamic rings, so look forward to those in future releases. Finally, I'll talk about the scenes, because I saved the best for last. I have to tell you that the work done on these maps are probably the most impressive part of the module. All of the maps are well organized and beautifully rendered with high quality art. Walls and lighting are added to every map, as well as having the applicable monsters and NPCs already placed in their correct locations. Not only that, but the very organized map journals for each location have been dragged out as map pens to their respective sections of the map, making it easy to quickly access the right information at the right time. I cannot express how much time spent on setup this saves for any dungeon master, making prep before an adventure nearly zero. Speaking as someone who's painstakingly created every one of the Lost Mine maps in Foundry, adding all of these elements manually, this is an absolute lifesaver. Honestly, the detail that they put into the scene prep for you is almost worth the price of admission alone. The last part of the maps I'll discuss, which, spoiler warning, deals with a fairly late stage map, has a programmed macro that you can actually move parts of the scene itself. If this wasn't impressive enough as it is, when we move over the walls layer, you can see that using the macro also moves the walls themselves to stay in sync with the artwork. With all the important details covered, let's come back to give my actual ratings. Remember, I look to see how well this content satisfies the goals of the creators, the needs of the customer, and the evaluation of its price. The goal of its creators over at Wizards of the Coast was to apply a fresh coat of paint on the original story while also providing a continuation of the story, which I think they did a very good job with. The goal of the creators at Foundry took this a number of steps further by creating the absolute definitive edition of this adventure by maximizing the power of their platform to create a truly impressive VTT conversion. So in that respect, the developers of Foundry did a wonderful job. As for the needs of the customer, I still think this entire adventure is very well crafted and provides a fun gaming experience that's a great sampling of what D&D has to offer and covers all of the pillars of play, being social interaction, exploration, and combat very well. The art is fantastic, the maps are well designed, and the story is engaging. I've already expressed how much I enjoy the digital features, and I think even if we simply look at the needs of the customer from the DM's perspective, this provides a completely polished adventure ready to play right out of the digital box. The desires of the audience is a little harder to gauge with this one, as the eldritch horror aspects may not be for everyone, and it's a fairly significant tonal shift from the lost mind portion of the adventure. With mostly cosmetic additions 
given to the original Lost Mine portion, it may not be enough of an add to make it worth going through again for certain Dungeon Masters. I, however, will always hold a special place in my heart for a Lost Mine, and the idea of taking this remastered version to new players is actually kind of exciting for me. But I understand your mileage may vary. If your desire is to have a great new VTT adventure to play, then definitely look no further. Not only are the rules of the adventure itself well organized, but a great benefit of the D&D 5e system for Foundry is that all of the SRD rules are freely accessible to navigate through and learn from. So between Foundry and this adventure specifically, they combine to truly form a ready-made starter kit. Finally, the evaluation of the price, to me, is pretty simple. The developers of Foundry put a lot of hard work and effort into creating a complete package that fully transforms the adventure from its original print form. The current US price of $29.99 for the full adventure with all the ready-made maps seem well worth it to me. I will admit, however, that the price could be a sticking point for someone who already owns the print or D&D Beyond versions of this adventure as they do not carry over or provide discounts. But for me, it's such a vastly different product in this format that I understand the fully separate price point. I also want to be able to support the developers of Foundry VTT who created this conversion so that we can see more of these adventures in the future. So, after all of that, we come to the final result. I think that the perfect audience for this adventure is any fans of Eldritch Horror, and most especially for brand new Dungeon Masters wanting to take a group of new players through a much more expansive story from start to finish. For that audience, I would absolutely highly recommend. Thank you all for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this, and happy questing!